The interest in Coleridge came about by the demand for power from Christchurch people and interest in power in general. They looked at everywhere else but Coleridge. In fact, they, they looked at a big dam on the Waimaka area and, and, and some other rivers. But eventually cost drove them back to look at Lake Coleridge, which was an existing storage. The lake's about 17 kilometres long. It's about 40 kilometres square area. It's very deep. It's very long. The primary feeders to the, the lake here is the Harper and Wilberforce. It was initially bypassing the lake altogether, so there was no other inflow but the natural catchment inflow to Lake Coleridge. Uh, the Harper is on the true left of the top of Lake Coleridge behind me, and it's huge gravel fan, so they had to cut through that. They had to build bun walls, and they used sandbags initially, and remembering that Back in those days there was, there was no significant earth moving machinery. This was all done with, with either steam shovels or hand dug and they eventually established concrete and gates, which are now automated gates, into a formal structure that could be used very reliably to transfer the water into the lake. The lake is at 509.4 metres height, so we've got a a difference in height between that and the power station of about 165 metres. Now before the water gets to the turbines it has to come through two intakes up at the lake. They have individual tunnels and they terminate at two surge chambers, big concrete basins which actually take the surging out of the water column and then they transition into steel penstocks. Uh, they're actually pipes, we call them penstocks in the hydro industry. The two different styles is 1.32 metres for the original four that were there, two of which we now use, and three of a 2.5 metre diameter which feed the, the newer and larger machines. That flow plus pressure gives us the power out of those turbines. The energy is taken out of it if you like and it discharges to the tail race and then flows out to the mighty Rakaia. Prime Minister Coates opened the, the station here and there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people trundle out from Christchurch. They spent hours getting out here. You can imagine what it was like getting out here in those days, but it was, it was massive. People wanted a different way of, of living. They, they wanted to, to modernise. Electric energy was the way to do that, and so there was a great desire for that. The demand just kept going up, so that actually drove the development of, of Coleridge. The station grew from uh, three machines initially to, to nine and then it was it was fully developed in effect. It not only was servicing Christchurch, 1923 they put a um, connection over to the west coast so it was actually supporting the west coast supply as well. When Trust Power purchased this asset in 1999 they saw an ability to to optimize the efficiency of the site. And when you optimize the efficiency of the site you use the water uh, more sparingly uh, it gives you a bit of business options as well as a bit of supply options for your customers. In terms of our machine sets at the moment, we have two 3 megawatt machines and then subsequent uh, 3 megawatt increased with another machine in 1923 and then they were followed by three 7.5 megawatt machines, the last one being installed and commissioned in 1930. Now those three megawatt machines have been subjected to modern technology like CFD analysis and using modern stainless steels and machining processes like CNC process to increase the efficiency of those machines. We've actually got four machines less than we originally had, but we're actually producing about another 75 gigawatt hours of energy, so just by efficient conversion of those machines. For us, of course, it's a business and uh, we're in a a free market now and that's that market is a very very challenging market and you would have experienced today the machine stopping and starting and it's our great operators in Tauranga that are sitting there at the desk being very attentive and making sure they get the greatest flexibility out of the machines to optimise the value of that market. I do want to mention our operators up at the Harper and Wilberforce. We had a, a chap who used to run things for us up there called Alan Stratford and Alan said about optimising the methodology of working up, up there in the Harper and Wilberforce and he really set the scene for getting the fuel into the system and um, you know you've got to realise that this is a 24-7 operation, two o'clock in the morning, big nor'wester comes in, Alan gets out there on his dozer and says right I'm going to get as much water as I can within the consent to take and you've got to remember there's things like turbidity and, uh, and, and maximum volume is we're allowed so they're grappling with this. These are just not bulldozer drivers. They're, they're weather watchers. They've got to have a scientific element to them. They've got to have a very strong understanding of weather and catchments and, and what we're allowed to do legally or not. 
So Alan retired and, and we've got a guy called Brian Lancaster who drives um, the dozer, does the same things that Alan used to, but he's taken it to another level. We've got a pretty easy ride compared to the guys who actually developed it because, you know, we have bulldozers and excavators and cranes and things are mobile and you can pick up the phone and get somebody here in five minutes. Back in those days they had traction engines and, and um, horse carts and they had to dig everything by hand and there was large numbers of people simply because they had to, it was manual labour, it was hard work, it was very difficult conditions out here, they didn't have the wet weather gear we have, you know they were, they were dedicated people who did so much good that we we're hoping to, to carry on and we can only build on. So they set the platform for us and to, to, um, to really maintain that sustainability. So you know, I'm hoping that uh, somebody's celebrating the second hundred year of, of um, Coleridge someday because I think that's the reality with uh, hydro stations and uh, sensible use of water.